everybody, it's Romania Black. Um, so we're on the penultimate episode of season one of Chainsaw Man. <laughs> I've got uh, an extra dog with me uh, this weekend, so uh, hopefully they don't get too crazy. I feel like I have power and dingy at my feet, and I'll let you figure out which one Huckleberry is. <laughs> But we're on the penultimate episode of Chainsaw Man. Uh, I got some new glasses to help me with Blu-ray so that my eyes don't dry out nearly as much uh, with the UV from my computer. So hopefully, uh, they don't glare too much, so I'm actually glad. I feel like I look I look like power as she's about to uh, face the master. So I felt like, oh yeah, these will definitely work. <laughs> but it's really funny. We are, we're on this penultimate episode, episode 11. I don't have a lot of comments. <laughs> Because I've been curbing spoilers hardcore. And so I'm sorry if I've skipped anybody's comments. I truly am. But I, my philosophy is better safe than spoiled. And I, it's the weirdest thing. I've never felt this way in a, with a series before. I mean, Heaven Official's Blessing. Yeah, there's people that, that accidentally spoil. And I've had to like, had people check out for me. But like with Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen and stuff, nobody spoils. Even though I'm anime only, they're just like, no, we're totally chill. But for some reason, Chainsaw Man, it's like people get feral and and sometimes not even meaning to spoil I've had several people even on patreon that have not meant to spoil but they've said some things that I'm like that seems like it's getting into spoiler territory especially if you're a manga reader because I'm not so I feel like when you read the manga or you read it ahead of time you are kind of influenced with your comments and so I've just had to be careful so there's some that I've just had to skip over that I'm like I'm sorry but I can't risk it <laughs> I'm, I'm too deep in now and I'm gonna say anime only so so hopefully that's not been a big deal but I do have two comments that I want to talk about uh, before we start this penultimate episode uh, one is from Ray Quiggs uh, Ray Quiggs talked about Makima's gestures in the OP and that um, and they're and they're anime only too they've not read the manga because we had a discussion about this they were like I wonder if the gestures they do because they make like the rectangle and stuff if it's like kind of like Aki with Cone if it connects to the devil they may have a contract with. I don't know. At this point, I think that Maki herself, Makima herself is a devil or a fiend. I don't know if there's a contract involved, but if there were, that could be tied to it, right? But also, it, it's interesting. I, I don't know. Her controlling the prisoners, there's a lot of like, we've talked about this in the comments the last few episodes with several people, that there's so much we don't know about the contracts that like Kobini has and Makima has with their devils. There's so much that, that Fujimoto does not give us answers to yet. And I like that. I like the mystery because then it's going to make when we find out all the more revealing and surprising. So I like that there's an air of mystery and we just don't know what's going to happen or what's involved. But I'm curious that I, I don't think we're going to get answers this season. No, I think that those are going to be things that are going to be revealed way on down the road in this series, but I'm excited when we get there. So, so there's that. And then um, Christopher Peterson talked about, you know, Aki probably, and I agree with Christopher Peterson on this, probably hid how much time he had left from Himeno because he didn't want her to know that he only had a couple of years left. And that's why she was still freaked out about the sword, probably because she could guess herself. Um, but that kind of means that maybe Aki felt even more guilty when she died because it's like she died to save him and he's like, I don't have that much time left. So you really shouldn't have wasted your life saving me. And it's like, uh, angst city. And so that's really sad when you think about it, which also makes Aki's quest to go after the gun devil even more pertinent because now he's driven by guilt and revenge for Himeno's sake and his family's sake. So Aki's just going through a lot right now, basically. And um, Christopher Peterson also noted that Dingy probably did not bring the apples into the hospital room. Those were probably left by hospital staff, which upon rewatching, yes. <laughs> I was like, no, if Dingy had brought the basket of apples, it would not have made it to the hospital room. He would have ate them or power would have taken them long before. So I, at this point in true power fashion, I have about a hundred different ideas and plans of how these last two episodes could go down. I we're, We have two episodes left of the season, and it's the weirdest place to be in because you have Aki, who's forming this contract with the future devil that we know nothing about. And we have a gun devil who's our supposed antagonist that we know nothing about. We have two henchmen, Sawatari and the blade devil, which we know 
nothing about. <laughs> and then we have Makima, who has these strange powers that we know nothing about. And so, and then we have Dinji and Power, who are just, we know they share a brain cell, but that's about it. And they're being trained by a mentor who we know nothing about. So... We're going into two episodes left in this whole damn season, knowing virtually nothing about the lore or world building that's involved with this series. And it's kind of a funky place to be at 11 episodes in, because normally a series sets you up with all these things. They give you all these answers and then it's just, okay, well, how do all the pieces come together? We know what the pieces are. How do they all fit together? What are we going to do with those? Fujimoto is not gracing us with that knowledge. He's just like, there's a puzzle. Maybe there's pieces. Maybe you can put it together. <laughs> so, so I'm really excited to see what's going to happen this episode, but I have no clue. We assume that Aki's going to make the contract with the future devil, but what is it going to cost him? What's it going to look like? Where do we go to from here? What's our objective? How much are we getting accomplished before the end of the season? Uh, <laughs> it's all up in the air. But that's pretty exciting, right? So I am looking forward to seeing what happens this episode. But I've donned my power glasses and I'm ready to see how we're going to do this. Like, what what are we doing? Division 4 has got to assemble to do something. I guess we'll find out, right? But I, I got off work today because I'm now on break. So I could watch this during the day. And I was like, I can't wait. So we're going to start episode 11 of Chainsaw Man. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And uh, y'all, make sure I got my subtitles on. I did not. Now they are. And let's do this. Avengers Assemble? <laughs> Just... Ah! <laughs> I, I doubt Fujimoto. I doubt Fujimoto. And I'm like, well, how much, how much can Fujimoto squeeze into the last two episodes? Well, apparently he can squeeze an awful lot into this one. So I, I am, I have no doubts, uh, what's going to be happening in the next episode for the season finale is just going to be like, pfft, just ridiculous, right? Right? I, oh my God, there was a lot that happened in this episode. I was just sitting there like, we have got a lot to go over. Okay. So I, I'm shipping Aki and the angel devil already. They've had, they've had three seconds of screen time, but it's the most poetic ship in all of shipdom. And I'm here for it. Even though she's a devil, it's fine. They can make this work. <laughs> Tale as old as time. I am here for all your crack shipping needs, clearly. Um, but we need to go through this episode. We finally get Kashibi. We get the mentor's name. Makima is on a war path. We'll talk about Makima. Um, it's funny. Dingy is... Dingy is... I just... I feel kind of bad for Dingy in a lot of ways. Because Dingy is so simplistic in his goals and his mindset. And there are some very complicated, complex things happening around him that he is not even aware of that I'm like, what is he going to do when he finds all this out? Like Dingy, Dingy doesn't really know a lot of what's going on. He doesn't. And the scary thing is, is that unlike most shonen, where your protagonist like learns as they go, they see, you know, how complex the world is and learns. There is a lot being kept from Dingy. Like there is a lot that Dingy is not being made aware of that we know. And so it's kind of, there's this big question of what will Dingy do when he finds out this information? What will he do to process it? Because Aki is keeping a lot secret. Aki's keeping his contract with the future devil secret. As far as we know, he's keeping his two years left in this world a secret. As far as we know, he's keeping like a lot of things close to the vest and not telling Dingy. And then Kishibi's keeping a lot from Dingy and power, which that's not surprising, but Makima's keeping things from Dingy. And then like the special division, like, like Dingy knows he's on a need to know basis and he does not need to know much apparently, which is really interesting because a lot of this entire series Dingy is the crux of the gun devil is after Dingy. So you would think 
you would want Dingy to be knowledgeable of the situation, but no, because of Dingy's personality and his like bare bones need to know basis attitude, Makima's like, well, we'll just kind of tell you as as you need to find out. But for right now, just just don't worry, right? Dingy kind of takes the back seat and becomes like not a damsel in distress, but he kind of becomes like the one character that's like, oh, well, you'll find out when you need to. Don't worry. Don't worry, sweetie. We'll keep you safe. Like one of those situations. So, man. Hmm. The future devil is the devil from the OP. He does the funky chicken dance. I'm so happy that we finally... And he's like a really freaking crazy devil that is just kind of bonkers. I, there's a lot of interesting things about this. So... Where do we start? I, I guess I guess we'll put Aki up here. We want to put Aki right here because Aki's got a lot of stuff going on with him. Um, Makima, she's got a lot of stuff going on with her. Um, we'll put the uh, various the various fiends and devils. Oh God, and devils. Um, in division four we're gonna put them right here and for now we will have some other stuff over here i suppose um and now now okay now there's a big question of which one was fushi's fiend because all of them are bad <laughs> all of them would be bad for fushi right on the one hand you have on the one hand, you have the shark fiend that out in public would cause a scene because it literally looks like a shark and it seems kind of crazy for violence. Then you have the violence fiend that would name and point be a problem. The spider fiend would probably be the least, the least problematic because they can hide their form, but they don't, they seem rather shy around people and easily agitated. So no, that wouldn't work. And then there's the angel devil who, if you touch it, will literally drain your life away. That's the most problematic of them all. And it explains now why she's all alone in all of the scenes with her. Because she can't be next to anybody if she touches him. She's like Rogue from X-Men. She's like Rogue from X-Men. Except when she touch when Rogue and X-Men touches somebody, she like drains their power away and takes their, their ability, their quirk, whatever have you. Um, in this, she literally is killing you if she touches you. Which, again... It could be a match made in heaven with Aki because Haki, Aki knows he's going to die anyway. So why not, right? I, oh, mm, ah, mm. Lots of things to think about. But yeah, the future devil. Talk about this future devil. It just, the future devil is so funny because it just comes out of nowhere. And Aki's just like, hmm. Like it says, the future rules. And Aki's like, I really don't have time for this. So, okay, we can talk about the future devil. Where's we'll put that under our our various fiends and devils. The the future devil, we'll just put it over here with Aki. Makes a contract by being in his uh right eye. Again, doesn't seem like that bad of a deal. Didn't get off pretty bad, but we find out that he's like, no, your death is going to freaking rule. Your death is going to be really gnarly. So I'm here for the ride. I want to experience your death. And it's like, hmm. Which makes me do, th I do think that as, as dire as the ghost devil choking Aki is, I don't think Aki's dying to the ghost devil. I think that this is going to be like a trial of Aki severing Honestly, if I'm being honest, I think that Aki severing and defeating the ghost devil will be his way of letting Himeno go and letting that part of his life with Himeno rest in peace and make room for the angel devil. <laughs> I do think, though, that it will be his way of moving on from Himeno, letting her rest in peace in his mind and not letting her death and the guilt of that weigh him down anymore. I think the ghost devil, him, his, I think he will find a way, even if he's helped by somebody, to fight the ghost devil. I think getting rid of the ghost devil will be his way of reconciling and moving on. I don't see Aki dying this season. I just don't. I could be wrong. Stranger things have happened, but I don't think Aki's going to die this season. I don't, I feel like they're saving his death is going to be something crazy with the gun devil later on. I feel like they're just setting up, especially this, where the future's like, hey, your death is going to be freaking sweet to see later. Going to stick around for that. But yeah, the future devil's so bizarre. Just being like the future rules with the six eyes and everything. 
So yeah, and it's kind of funny he says the future rules because yes, the future is going to happen whether you like it or not. It is, that is the kind of thing is that the future is ruling over you no matter who you are or what you do, the future is going to happen. You can't stop it. It's an unstoppable force. What that future will bring is to be debated, but you can't stop the future. So it's a pretty scary devil when you think about it that yeah, the future can be quite terrifying. And this is like a manifestation of it, but it's jolly. Like it's so weird that I was expecting the future devil to be very scary to match its ability, but it's jolly. That's maybe that's worse for Aki because Aki's like, oh God, why? It's like, why do I have to get paired up with this jolly, happy devil? It's kind of interesting that you have, and of course we have in the OP, the angel devil looking up and then there's Aki and Himeno. I'm telling y'all, dots are connected. I've connected the dots. It's like the meme where it's like, I've connected the dots and they're like, you haven't connected shit. And I'm like, no, I've connected them. Uh, I do think that the future devil, It what's curious is that Aki's contracts with these devils kind of contradict a lot of Aki in, in himself. Like the future devil is really jolly and jovial and Aki seems anything but. And then you had Kone who Himeno kind of states as maybe a more seductive devil and Aki seems pretty the least seductive person possible, right? He ain't, she ain't smooth talking to anybody. And then you have the curse devil, which is taking his life. And that seems to be like the one thing Aki wanted was the chance for revenge. And the curse devil's taking it away as pun as a price to pay to get that power to do so. So it's interesting that the curses that Aki makes contracts with are kind of contradictory to his character in a way. It's interesting. But yeah, so we're going to get past this OP as much as I love the future devil doing their funky chicken dance. And then we cut back to the ghost devil and then the blade devil at the end. So I feel like that's setting up for the next episode. We had the future devil come in, the ghost devil came back, and now the blade devil is going to try to fight Dingy again at the end. And it's like, what are we going to do? I, I, I would not be surprised if Sawatari and the blade devil died in this season. We got the nosebleed from Sawatari, meaning like she's maybe being affected by Makima already. Or she's affected by using the snake devil to bring back the ghost devil. It might take more power for the snake devil to regurgitate something that it's ate, being the ghost devil. Hmm. But I feel like I feel like Sawatari will probably die this season. Now, whether the blade devil dies or not, I could see him dying, but I could also see him not dying. I guess. I won't be surprised if he kicks the bucket next episode, but I won't be surprised either if he somehow manages to escape. But I, though I get the sinking feeling that Sawar, Sawatari is going to die. I feel like the snake girl is going to die. Could be wrong though. But yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. Future rules, future rules. Like what the hell? Like he's like a tree spirit. He's like kind of like, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the entity in Princess Mononoke, the tree spirit in the forest that has like the big eye and it has like the hair coming, the mane coming down of it and it has like the leaves and tendrils. It's like if, if Fujimoto took that tree spirit, the woodland spirit from Princess Mononoke and made it into a devil monster. That's what it looks like to me. But so he's like, you shout future rules too. Come on. <laughs> he's just, and Aki is not here to play around. He's like, I'm here to make a deal with you. Tell me what you want from me. And the future devil's like, oh, I guess you're no fun. You're a party pooper. I, I don't know. I would be very scared if, if Dingy met this devil because he'd probably be like, hey, yeah. And he'd probably do exactly what it told him to. He's like, okay, you've got a shitty attitude. <laughs> He's like, fine, whatever. Let's take a peek into your future. And that's going to help me decide on the trade. Hmm, so stick your head into my gut already. How else am I supposed to see your future? And Aki's like, well, that sounds gross, but okay. Which honestly is very creepy. The idea of sticking your head into the crevice of this devil's stomach. It's like cut open like a tauntaun. It looks rather disgusting. And then it bends over and like looks around. It almost looks like it's like getting like pleasured by that. And it's really creepy. And then he's like, oh, but nothing happened. And then he starts laughing. And I love that he like tilts his chin up and says, here's how it's going to work. I'm going to live inside your right eye. 
and that way I can lend you my power. And Aki's like, uh, oh, that's it? And he's like, oh, well, that look you're asking asks if he's like, the reason is your death in the future will effing rule. So he's like, I want to be there and see it and feast on your death and the energy from it. It's like, Ugh. and he has like the six eyes inside. Ugh. Creepy, very creepy. So that makes me wonder, that makes me wonder if, if this future devil, the one person that gave half their lifespan, if the future devil got greedy and was like, well, I want to see your death early. So I'm going to take half your lifespan. So we get to it sooner. And that's what they took. And then if the other person, maybe the other person didn't have anything. Maybe the other person didn't have anything of value to give the future devil. So they're like, well, I'm going to take your senses and your eyes, but that's curious. We found out it took their eyes. I'm just going to posit a theory here and it's probably wrong, but I'm wondering if, because the eyes of the future devil kind of have the rings around them, sort of like Makima's. I'm wondering, I said in the last episode that Makima could have made a contract with the future devil. So the future devil in uh, with one member took the eyes, took the eyes and taste and smell from a contract. Which is curious because we have a lot of discussion of eyes in this episode. We have the future devil that took the eyes from a member. We have it having the eye and making Aki stick its head in there to see into the future. We have Makima literally taking the eyes out of people and staring into people's eyes and making them bleed. Like there's a, there's a lot of sight is, there's a lot of sensory things going on in this episode that are rather curious, right? <laughs> and Aki's just like, oh, so I'm going to die a pretty crazy death. I'm glad that Aki said no. I'm glad he's like, oh, do you want to know how it happens? You're going to. And he's like, it doesn't matter. Aki's like, I'm not interested in how I die. As long as I can kill my targets, the rest doesn't matter. Now get in my eye. So I'm glad that Aki stopped him because that's the one thing. Like, I don't think I would want to know how something like that was going to happen because then you just obsess about it and mm, I wouldn't want to know and I'm glad Aki doesn't want to know because I feel like that would take away so no so Aki makes the contract it that's and he has less than two years so I think the future devil's like eh I want to see how this plays out and so then we go to Denji and Kashibi and power in them and they're just like just getting massacred Right. And it looks like, and he gets the little cut on his cheek. The master Kashibi does. And he's like, okay, we're good for today. So I want to put Kashibi over here. Right. Kashibi, the mentor. Okay. He's rather interesting, right? He's rather interesting. And he tells them, I wondered if he was one of the ones that made a contract with the future devil. Cause we get a lot with his eyes too. There's focus on them. But basically he's like, oh, your moves get full marks for that one. We don't need to do this every day from now on. We'll just do it once a week. And I love that Denji's like, oh yeah. <laughs> we made it to once a week where we're not getting killed every day. And I love that Power's like, yeah, <laughs> while she's on the ground. It's great. He says your brain needs to keep cool even when you're feeling high. So Kishibi is saying that you, you need to keep a calm head in battle, even when you're like feeling the devil's high, when you're like getting high on blood and everything and you're getting like high on the violence and stuff, you need to be able to think. Otherwise, even if you're somewhat strong, your enemy, if they're smarter than you, are going to take advantage and deal some damage. So you need to be careful and pay attention and don't forget your situation and what weapons are available to you. And tomorrow we're going to try some live combat with an eye towards training. So in Kashimi's mind, He's like, we're going to go have a little training mission. It's no big deal. We're just going to go kill the snake devil woman and the blade devil that nearly killed you two days ago. It's totally fine. Which has been more than two days, I feel. But the mission is to test Division 4. So we're going to test Division 4 out and go after the snake devil woman, Sawatari, and the blade devil. 
We're going to go after them and either you're going to die or it's going to be a good training mission. It's going to be one of the two. There is no in between, right? There's no in between. And he says, if you guys, you'll get disposed of in a for real battle with me if you can't do your job right. And Dingy's like, okay. And I love that Dingy, he kind of looks pensive there with his hand up on his knees. Like, well, I'll show you some mercy if and let you live teach if it comes to that. And I love that Kasibi's like, what? He's like, you've made me stronger and I can kill more devils because of you. And that means I've got my ticket to hooking up with Makima. Oh, Dingy, sweet Dingy. Sweet Dingy. So we're going to put Dingy down here. So Dingy, we don't get a lot with power this episode. She doesn't do a whole lot this episode. But with Dingy, he said he would show mercy on his mentor. And he feels, he feels more powerful. And that is one step closer to Makima. Here's the thing. He can tell Power all about his dreams of being with Makima because Power doesn't care. Power's a, a fiend. She's like, whatevs. You want to mate with the creepy woman? Sure, go right ahead. Kashibi is a little bit different because he's been around the block and he seems to know a lot more about Makima than anybody else. And so he's like, oh, this kid is like wrapped and coiled around her fingers so tightly. She has got him like in the palm of her hand. And he just stares unmoving at him like, hmm. And what do we cut immediately to? We cut immediately to, now the, the sign, the sign that's on the, the, the restaurant that they're at, it's, it means one, doesn't it? It means one, right? Like, like top brass, right? We're at the top of the, top of the hill because he's from division one. So they're at his place. And he's like, and she goes, oh, I appreciate you. I hope you'll continue to instruct Dingy in power. And he's, and he's sitting there drinking the sake and he's like, I hate them. Which, here's the thing. He's getting attached to them already, right? So he is growing, growing attached to Dingy and power. Despite his best efforts, he is getting attached to them, which which is a red flag that something bad's gonna happen to him, right? So that's death flag number one. Whenever your mentor figure is getting attached to your students, that's death flag number one. He's like, whenever the hunting dogs I train end up dead, I find myself drinking more. So we get the idea that his drinking, that his drinking is a form of grief. For his dead students. And he drinks all the time. Which is problematic and sad. Right? Makima, if you'll notice, has no drinks. Just a pair of chopsticks like she's patiently waiting on her food. And so we see a cut to his eye. It says, I figured I wouldn't mind what happened to a pair of toys. But... I wonder if he made a deal with the... Now, it's like the big question of... I feel like the meme where the guy has the butterfly is like, is this someone that has a deal with the future devil? <laughs> like, I feel like that's what it is. But it could be. It could be the future devil. Because here's the thing. Did he make a contract? Because the future devil says that he can make you see the future briefly, right? Well, kind of like a character in a series we talked to a few episodes back... If you can just see the future for a moment, you can see attacks coming and you can dodge them, right? So that would make sense with him going in the last episode to the house that he saw, he saw the spear, he saw the spears coming from there and for he saw them before they happened and was able to dodge them. He was saw, he saw Denji attack him beforehand and was able to dodge them too. It could be that he's the one, either he lost half his lifespan or... Maybe he has lost both sight in his eyes because his eyes always look kind of dim. Maybe he's blind, but he can see the future through the future devil. So he doesn't need eyesight if he can see the future, right? I'm going to have to pay more attention now, but it seems like he drove. So maybe that's not it, but he could have lost half his lifespan. And if he's drinking, that doesn't necessarily mean that he would need taste or smell because the effect of the alcohol would still be the same despite whether you could taste or smell it. So I don't know, but the focus on eyes in this episode, like the eyes and the sake glass and all that, they're all tied together. It's, it's very interesting, right? 
that he sees the eye there. He's like, it must be old age. Now I'm even getting attached to them. And he could have just gave up half his lifespan to have the future devil contract. Could be, right? Could be. Makima, she's just like, oh, you, you want to discuss something? Again, Makima, he goes on this, this kind of brief little tirade about how he's being sentimental and feeling stuff. And she's just kind of like, what were we talking about? Like, she just doesn't seem like she can relate to feeling sentimental, right? So she was called to meet with uh, Kashibi. She was called to meet with him. And he always seems in this series like he has just like a, a leg up from her. And he's like that assault that hit the special division. Public safety isn't clueless. You knew it was going to happen and you didn't stop it, did you? And her eyes are so scary where she's just like, well, I came under attack too. So why me? And he says, I don't care. I don't care what effed up shit you have cooking is amazing as a line. Because he's like, I don't care about your personal agenda, but here's the thing. I don't care what your plans are or how many of my students you kill. But as long as you're serving mankind's interests. Well, that's the biggest you are not human marker that I've ever seen. So his thing is with Makima is that he doesn't care... He doesn't care as long as devils serve mankind and they're on the side of humans, which goes back to the question he asked uh, Dingy and Power in the last episode. He's like, who do you serve? Who, whose side are you on, humans or devils? And they were both were like, well, right now, humans. So he's like, I don't care what you're doing as long as you're helping humanity. That is the biggest you are not a human flag that uh, we've seen so far in this series and she just stares he's like but only in that case he's like if you start to serve anybody but humans i'm gonna be pissed and i like that she goes all i want is to serve as is to save as many people as possible from the devils so here's what she says she's like all i want to do she wants to save as many humans from devils as possible and she says if this operation meaning if they go after sawatari and the blade devil if it's a success division four's existence will actively become part of the public record so if if their mission succeeds then division four will be public knowledge. Now that's interesting because Division 4 is primarily made up of all these fiends and devils and experimental things. How do these fiends and devils get stronger? When people fear them. How do they fear them unless they know them? So she's banking on the fact that their, their existence is going to become public knowledge and people are going to know about Dingy and Power and the other fiends and devils and that's going to make them stronger as we go. So it would make sense why she wants this to be a success, right? And she's like, that'll give us more freedom and we'll be able to save more people from devils. Mm -hmm. So becoming public knowledge means that they'll have more freedom and that freedom means they can save more people from devils. Ah! <laughs> that, that, oh, okay. <laughs> Is that true though? Because it's like if they become public knowledge, we already have a bunch of devils and stuff going after Dingy and they barely know him. If they make him public knowledge, how are we saving people from the devils? Like, that's just going to make them rise up against these guys even more. So, that's rather curious. Giving them more freedom. I'm like, will it? Mmm. And she's, she again, she's so prim and proper. She, stand, she sits straight up. Like, girl keeping her posture no matter what. It is, it's like a doll, almost, right? And he just looks at her. And says, you liar. 
that gave me chills in the reaction and it gives me chills now. He says that Makima is a liar. She's a liar. So it's like, you're, you're a liar. This is not why you're doing this. Mm -mm. And he just points at her. And the moment that she just smiles, I'm like, oh my God, nope, nope. She's just like, mm. I, I'm very curious what he has on her because he clearly, has, he's the number one devil hunter, right? She's insanely powerful. But for some reason, her and him, she kind of tolerates him and doesn't try to hurt him. And he tolerates her. There's something going on there. And I don't want spoilers, obviously, or any hints or clues. But I'm going to be fascinated to find out, like, why does she put up with him? And why does he put up with her? Like, what is their deal? And that, that's one, like, going to be mystery going into season two. Being like, okay, what are we going to find out about these two um, as we go further? If we do. If we even do. So we cut to the hotel where Sawatari and them are hanging out and all the goons. I want to make note that the, the blade devil's like sitting there like fidgeting, like messing with his hands. Like he's clearly like uncomfortable or nervous or anxious. And her, she's just up against the wall like whatevs. And he's just sitting there wanting to do something. He's itching to do things. The boss has got a separate team escorting him. We should move you too. Okay, nowhere in Japan is safe. So the gun devil, the gun devil is here? The gun devil's here. With an escort team. What we're assuming, we're assuming the boss is the gun devil, right? <laughs> Unless the boss is somebody that's below the gun devil. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Seeing the gun devil here seems a bit much for the end of the season, even though it would be kind of cool to get like a sneak peek of what the gun devil looks like. I almost wonder if we have, like, there's the gun devil up here, this lower boss, then the blade devil and Sawatari, and then all the minions. So maybe it's not the gun devil they're talking about, but it's like the second in command and Sawatari and the blade devil are with them. I just, I find it weird that we would be getting the gun devil this soon, but we might, and that they're here with a team protecting them. But maybe, who knows? I, I don't know. Could be it. And then Sautari says, nowhere is safe as long as Makima is alive. And we're ready for them if we strike, if they strike here. So shut up. And I was like, they call her a bitch, but I'm like, she's got more power than you goons. You need to stop. And then he says, granddad would never let us run. So interestingly enough, he sticks to his guns. The blade devil, he is like, no, my grandfather wouldn't have ran away. He was a Yakuza. So we're going to stay here and fight because that's just the honorable code to do. And he's driven by revenge. He wants to get Denji. He's like, he knows Denji's in Division 4 and he wants to get revenge on him. I'm going to carve out his heart. And so, yeah. Okay. And she says, the rest of you don't need to worry about the big guy. If he dies, we can bring... She says, even if he dies, he can be brought back. So there is this mystery, right, of, of the boss and the big guy and bringing him back. Which maybe they're referring to the blade devil. Maybe she's like, since he's got a devil inside of him, he's kind of like dingy. As long as he's, as long as we can get his body, we can bring him back. So quit worrying about him. Maybe that's what she's meaning. She's like, as long as we can watch out for the blade devil and make sure he doesn't like get split into a thousand pieces, we can bring him back. So it's fine if he stays here to fight dingy. It's okay. But if you're staying here, you need to be careful about getting bitten. So... I was really honestly worried about the zombies this whole episode at first because she's like, we have all these zombies and once you're bitten and apparently the granddad Yakuza left these zombies to like take care of the division four people. What a misdirect, right? Because I, I, zombie stuff scares me because I hate the idea of like zombies that they bite you and you become a zombie. That's like, uh, it's so scary to me. And so this whole episode I was like, well, damn it. I don't want Kobeni to get bit or power to get bit or any of these others. I was genuinely worried this whole episode that they were going to be a problem. No, <laughs> not really. Doesn't seem to be. Now, 
Maybe that'll change next episode, but I don't want Kobini to get bit or anything like that. No. She says a human who gets bitten by a zombie becomes a zombie. So, I just don't want Kobini or any of them to get bit. I don't want that to happen. Damn it. So, so we have these two. Now, there was somebody in the comments asking about the scars. If there's any relationship with the scars. Because several characters seem to have them. Like, you have... K Kashibi has a scar in his face. Um... The girl and the guy, Tindo and Kasabe, have the, the scars on their noses. I took it as like an aesthetic thing that's there because Aki doesn't have a scar and Arai didn't have a scar and Kobini doesn't either. I just took it that maybe their scars were just something aesthetic that Fujimo did to, to show that they've been in battle before. Maybe that was it. But who knows? Maybe Tindo and them have a partnership with the same devil. I don't know. But yeah, Kasabi's like, we're going to do some sightseeing and head back to Kyoto. And we'll probably never meet again, so there's something that I want to ask you. Like, I can't believe we just saw these two randos for two episodes and we're never going to see them again. Come on. And so he asked Aki why he's after the gun devil. He's like, do you really think you can kill that thing? He's like, you just lost 20 public safety agents dealing with like a henchman of it. You think you're going to go up against, like, this devil that took down millions of people? And he says that Tindo and him ended up in the public safety because they had a grudge against the gun devil as well. But they gave it up. They realized how futile it was and decided to just work with public safety instead and go from there because he realized it was impossible. So he's like, what makes you think that you're going to succeed? It kind of ticks me off. Because you have this big hotshot goal. Like some manga character. Like breaking the fourth wall, right? But Aki. He's like, it's so lame it gives me goosebumps. And he's like, see, you can literally see him here, right? And she's like, I sure can't. <laughs> and she's like, no, you're full of shit. But Aki's like, I don't care. He's like, I can't do anything else. Aki's like, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care if I die. Y'all can laugh at me. He's like, but I've got two years left in my life. I have nothing else I could be doing right now. Like, this isn't realistic. It's just all I can do and be happy with myself and feel like I have no regrets. I can't keep going otherwise. And it's like, that's the, the sad thing is that Aki, the only way for him to have no regrets is to keep moving forward. Even when he knows it's going to kill him. He's like, I don't have a choice. I can't live with myself otherwise, basically. And they're like, okay. And they just let him out. And they toss him the Coke. I like that they toss him the Coke right in front of the Public Safety uh, Commission office. And Aki thanks him. And I like that they, they both kind of look at him like, you are definitely a lost cause, but we respect you, right? Despite you just being having a terrible personality. And I love that he says, you might piss me off, but I'm rooting for you. Here's one last piece of advice. Everyone who works in a special division is crazy. So watch yourself. And I'm like, Aki's crazy too. That's the thing. Aki's whole thing of staying with this mission, despite everything, Aki is, he's secret crazy. He gives me like Fushigoro, Jujutsu Kaisen secret crazy vibes. Like, like he's the quiet crazy, right? Because he's literally, he could go off to the Kokomos and leave and spend the last two years of his life like on a beach doing nothing. But instead, he's like choosing to be in the midst of all these devils going after an unrealistic goal that he knows he's not going to achieve because he can't think of himself doing anything else. He's crazy, <laughs> right? He's absolutely crazy. But that's just the way it is. So, okay. We go to this secret house that looks like it's on top of a hill, right? Again, high altitude. The, the house that's on top of a hill. And this guy is this mob leader that says that they have a member of the public safety there. And she's like, oh, gee, thank you for your cooperation. Again, they all keep their distance. And so this guy says he heard about their younger guys popping off in Tokyo. And I owe you any answers that I've got, but it wasn't on my orders. He says that from what I heard, the Sawatari woman's the one behind it. So this guy tells Makima, he's like, look, these were my goons 
but I didn't give the order for them to go after your guys. That was Snake Woman. Sawatari gave the orders. It's her fault. She was the contact that hooked these guys into deals involving the gun devil. And so she looks at the picture like, hmm, what kind of deals? And they gave the gun devil 20,000 yen and they get guns and ammo in exchange. And so that's the crazy thing here is that we have this idea. We have this idea of the gun devil, the gun devil wanting money, which I guess it would be interesting. You know what would be funny is if the gun devil wasn't really, didn't exist. If the gun devil was kind of fabricated, that would be kind of interesting if the gun devil was just like this fabrication from a group to make people, and that there was something, there was some other reason that caused all these deaths, but it wasn't necessarily the gun devil. It was something else. I, I guess I can believe that the gun devil exists, but the fact that it needs money, it almost seems like Sawatari and the blade devil are, they're working for someone else that's not the gun devil, but they're making the whole thing seem like a gun devil event. That's what it seems like. To me, it seems like the gun devil is not responsible for all of this. Instead, it's whoever the boss that Sawatari and them are working for, but it's not the gun devil. It's something else. And they're just using the gun devil's name and carrying out actions in its name to make it seem like it's this big thing that it's not. It's, some, it's like a misdirect. And that would kind of explain why the blade devil was like, oh, I'm still not strong enough to beat the gun devil. Because a, a few episodes ago, we were like, well, why would the blade devil say that if he's working for the gun devil? Why would he be after the gun devil while working for him? What if he's not working for the gun devil? What if Sawatari and the blade devil are working for another devil, but they're using the gun devil's name? What if that boss they're working for is a subordinate of the gun devil? So they're gathering this money and resources up giving the gun devil more power, but they're not actually connected, connected to him, if that makes sense. There's a degree of separation there. I don't know, but the fact that it needs money is interesting. And he makes the comment that the devils aren't too different than us needing money, right? They're not so different from us after all. Yeah, if anything, this season has shown us something. It's that a lot of the things with the devils are very similar to humans. They're just exaggerated or uninhibited, unfiltered, but they are similar to humanity, just a little different, but not too different, right? So that's fascinating. And then Makima, Makima says, I need you to write down the names of everyone in your organization. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna get back into Death Note vibes that she needs the names of everyone in the organization. She's like, look, I got my piece of the death note. I need you to write names down for me, please, and thank you. That has a contract with the gun devil. That's interesting. So she wants, <coughs> name, she wants the name of everyone in the organization that has a contract with the gun devil. Which is curious. Like, not just anybody, but the ones with the contract. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure, we can do that. We'll throw him in the slammer for a while and give him something to think about. And I'm like, <laughs> no, she's not. She's not going to throw them in the slammer at all. I need the names from other families as well, not just yours. Not just your Yakuza. She's like, I want names from every organization that you got. All of them. And he's mm. like, oh, well, no, <laughs> we, 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 he says, miss, he says, miss, you're not getting the big picture. And I'm like, honey, you're about to die. I'm like, he says, if I did that, and the other families find out, well, we'd have a big war. And she's like, I don't care. She's like, it'd be real stupid. And she's like, it's for the safety of the public. Again, she says that all of this is for public safety. Again, the very nature and name of the organization. It's like, Ugh! I'm requesting your cooperation. I get the impression that she, she goes about things in a very simple and calm way first. And then when you don't do what she asks, then she's like, well, now I'm going to pop off. So I gave you a warning and he just lights the, when he blew the cigarette smoke or the cigar <laughs> smoke in her face, I was like, oh honey, you just done goofed. And he's like, did you ever hear the term necessary evil before? The moment he started the necessary evil speech, I was like, honey, you are dead. You are done. But there's this term and it ties back 
to what the Blade Devil called his grandfather, which was a necessary evil, right? He says, what happens if we end up wiping each other out? All it does is open up Japan to the foreign mafia. And he's like, you're going to deny, I'm not going to deny that we'd, end, we'd get up to bad business, but the Chinese and Soviet mobs make us look like angels. And we're the ones keeping them away. So he's like, you're not going to hurt us because we're we're making your life better. And she just smirks the whole time. I'm like, girl, girl. Just like how devil hunters keep people safe from the devils. The Yakuza are keeping Japan safe from the foreigners. It's like, yeah, yeah. Though I hear there's a lot of uneducated types in your line of work. So maybe you just don't get it. I was like, he is slandering her. And I'm like, honey, you are about to die. And she's like, okay. She's like, I brought my doggy bag in. And now is the part where I reach in and get my doggy bag of special goodies out because you're being an asshole. And she, and they all just kind of look at her. And he's like, oh, well, what, what bribe is going to make me snitch, lady? And she's like, this isn't money. It's a collection of things that belong to associates of everyone here. So what she has is a collection of eyes from the associates of everyone here. She's like parents, grandparents, siblings, lovers, wives. She's like all of your families. She's like their eyes. Eyes from their families. Like girl just, she just ripped the horse head off and put it in your bed. That's what she did. He's like, what? In, in the bag? I feel like the manga is much grosser than this. Uh-huh. And it's a bunch of eyeballs. Yep. And she's like, please relax. The public safety of someone who can return these safely. Like I'll give these back to your family members. If you cooperate, I can introduce you. And then he touches her and she looks at him. And when she looks at him, that's when, like, she makes him die. Oh. So the question is, like, she stared at him with the eyes and was able to make him die. And she's like, when you talk about necessary evil, you're using that term to justify the evil acts that you commit. Mm-hmm. Society doesn't need your excuses. It's not a true necessary evil unless the nation is holding the leash and maintaining control. So that's a line there. She says that she's like you're just making an excuse. It's not really a necessary evil unless the nation is holding the leash and maintaining control. Makima is saying that she herself is a necessary evil and holding the leash and maintaining control, doing that with Dingy, it's right there in the OP. She's like, no, I am a necessary evil. I'm doing these things because that's what needs to be done. Now, Kashibi can say you're a liar and you're doing these for other reasons, but this is what she's telling them, right? And God, that stare. And then we cut away from her, but she's clearly killed everyone there. And so they found the hotel. They have the basement surrounded, and they're leaving the actual raid to Special Division 4. So then we have Kashibi. And so, meanwhile, Sawatari and the gun and the blade devil, they're like saying how they're going to kill as many people as possible and steal Dingy's heart. And then the two of us can make it out if they use Snake, right? And he says, I just want to kill Dingy. And she's like, you're getting ahead of yourself and worked up that we need to keep to the plan, right? And so Kashibi gets there. I love Power's rolled up pant legs. It's great. I love the rolled up pant legs. It's wonderful. Dingy with the axe is great. Kabini's like, I hate this. <laughs> I love that Kabini's like, I want to go home. I hate it. And he's like, well, then why don't you? And she's like, I hate it here. And he's like, I'm going to slaughter sideburns, man. And I love that Power's like, our minds have been honed as well. Like, these two dipshits. And Kobini's, Kobini looks so tiny compared to them. And she's like, I hate it here. <laughs> she's like, you guys are just sharing a brain cell. And Aki, 
Aki noticeably is keeping his distance, right? I feel like Aki at this point, he's keeping his distance from the three of them because I feel like Aki, one, doesn't want to get in their way, doesn't want to be a burden, but Aki is like on a mission himself and he does not want to get the others involved in it. He just, he feels like he doesn't want to get them emotionally involved, so he's just doing his thing. And he goes up to Kashibi and is like, I'm going to leave these three. It's interesting. Uh, Dingy and Power are still together of the trio, but Aki has kind of separated himself from the group, which is curious. And so he goes to Kashibi asking what the plan is. And Kashibi's like, we don't have a plan. He's like, the entire division goes in. That's the plan. Which, in Kashibi's favor, it sounds like trying to, it's like it would be hurting the most feral group of cats. How could you even begin to get them to know what to do and to be in any form of organized anything? He's like, no. He's like, we are not going to be able to organize anything with this group. It's going to be insanity once we let them loose in this building. So the four of them go in, Aki with Dingy Power and Kobini. They go in, but it sounds like the other fiends and stuff are already in there. And so they have this one guy, Sheena, with the, the PD are talking to him and they're like, oh yeah, and Furuno, who's from Division 2, and Kashibi is like, I'm captain of Special Division 4. He's just as crazy as them. And he's like, oh, yeah, the police in Division 2 just need to keep the entrances to the first floor and basement sealed off, and they'll take out the terrorists inside. There's one thing you have to be careful about. Don't let any of them out. They're like, it's comprised almost entirely of non-humans so if you let any of them out we are in trouble and when he said that at first i was like well it's just power and dingy because <laughs> that's all i thought it was i was like oh well then we're fine it's just power and dingy they're not gonna go run amok in the city they have their wits about them not these other ones so division two and the pd are keeping keeping watch outside to keep division four in that's what they're doing and it's it almost feels like it doesn't feel like the avengers so much as the league of extraordinary gentlemen it feels like just a group of the most anti-heroes of the anti-heroes and they're like yeah the casualties would be far worse if these guys get out I'm going to explain their unique characteristics. Give the audience some exposition because you have to be prepared to engage with them, not the terrorists. The terrorists, y'all can deal with, but these guys are a bit problematic. And then so we get, it's like everybody in the OP just decides to show up. It's wonderful. And so we get Shark Man. Yes. He's like, zombies, zombies. And he's just like, he's kind of like Dingy, has the pointy devil teeth, right? And little these, he looks like a street shark, is what he looks like. He looks like street sharks, right? He's like, it's all I can eat. And he can, I love, so we have the shark fiend. We have the shark fiend. He's our first that we see, right? I feel like they're going from maybe least powerful fiend to most powerful in this lineup. Like we're going from least to most powerful because I feel like the angel devil is the most powerful of the group. He's like, oh, I love it. It's just like Jaws. And he comes up and starts eating the shark fiend. And he has all these eyes. Ah. He can swim inside walls and floors. So he kind of is like Lemillion from My Hero Academia. He can swim in walls and floors ah. like a ghost. Like a ghost. And he has like a shark head ah. that can eat. Uh can eat anything pretty much, right? So that's what we have. And Huckleberry's like, throw the toy. So he can swim inside floor, floors and walls and he can transform into his devil form for a brief period of time. So he has like a little, he kind of has like a little bit of the shark head sticking out, but then he can become the whole shark and eat entire things. It's great. He looks kind of cute. It's really sad. He looks kind of cutish. So it's like, Okay, well, that could be one of Fushi's. Wouldn't want that to go out. Got it. And then we have the violent. But even he doesn't, he doesn't know. 
can, he can't differentiate from friend or foe because he almost attacks the violent fiend. And the violent fiend like kicks him away and is like, hey, dude, get a grip. Also, Shark Fiend is ripped, just so we're all clear. Violent Fiend looks like a character from Fight Club. I love the death mask that he wears. Like the death mask, the plague doctor mask, and then he has the hood up. I thought you were a zombie. And so then he just goes and punches like the head, the violence fiend. He says, normally a fiend makes a devil weaker than they were, but he's still insanely dangerous. Interesting. So we have the violence fiend. The violence fiend that seems like he's made for close combat. All right. He's already dead. So if they bite him, I guess it's not really going to matter. He wears a mask that dispenses. What did they say about him? They said about him, he's still pretty strong. He punches a hole with him, just kind of like what Makima did. It dispenses a poisonous gas. So his mask, mask has a poisonous gas. Okay. That he always wears no matter what. And he was in the OP too. So glad that we're establishing that. And then he tells the lady, so like these fiends and devils don't know each other. They're just now in the division together. Like they have no clue what each other are, what they can do. The spider devil, so we have two fiends, the shark fiend or the violence fiend. So I guess Fushi had a fiend. It could not have been the angel or the spider because they're legit devils. So I guess, my guess is that the shark fiend was Fushi's because taking him out in public seems like it would not work at all, right? I think the violence fiend could pass off as a person, but the shark fiend, no. Um, so then the spider devil, I also like the shark... The shark fiend is kind of like, if you ever read uh, Look Back, one of the comics that the main characters was creating, it was one of Fujimoto's one-shots, they were doing a thing called Shark Kick. And so we're tying to that. So that's fun. I like that. But the, the spider devil, she looks like, like the grudge. She's scary. And she looks like a human, but she has like a devil form. And he instantly realizes she's a devil and like she just kind of comes out from underneath like she looks like a person but is in fact not her human form is just a disguise so we established that humanoid devils humanoid devils tend to be friendly but are still devils so yeah makima can totally be a devil because just because she's humanoid does not mean she's not a devil she could totally be a devil Absolutely, because we've seen that the angel one is and the spider one is. They just hide their devil appearance with this human cover. So she could totally be a devil. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they may seem friendly, but they'll kill you if you look at them funny. Again, the thing with the eyes, the guy looked at her funny and he died. The spider devil killed all these. Yep. And then the one head goes towards the angel devil. The angel devil's my favorite. The angel devil is exactly like I imagine. She's the polar opposite of power. She's so chill. She's just like, ugh, it got on my shoes. <laughs> I love she just picks up the head. This seriously sucks. And she just is eating the zombie. Yeah, is eating it. And she's just sitting there like, just with the, with the zombie in her, like eating the head, just being like, okay. With the angel wings, the angel devil says a bit of a special case. No enmity towards humans, but you want to keep your distance. So she really doesn't care about anything. She's pretty apathetic. So apathetic. Apathetic towards humans. Like doesn't really care. Um, but you want to keep your distance. So basically the physical contact means your lifespan span gets drained away. So physical, physical touch drains your life. Interesting. So she's a devil herself. So you could make a contract with her. Interesting. Which kind of fits the angel motif. Like you'll go to heaven if you're around her too much. Hmm. But yeah, Dingy and them were like over there fighting. Dingy's like hacking them with the, with the axe and powers fighting them too. And then... Aki's cutting him with the sword. And then it's like, he like, it's like love at first sight. He like flips the sword and she just looks at him. 
And she's like, hey, can I ask you something? You've got a handkerchief I could borrow? Like, there's nothing wrong with her. She's like, I just need a handkerchief. And then he looks over to her. And it's like, tale as old as time, y'all. At that moment, the moment he flapped that sword and she was just standing there looking at him like, hey, can you help me? Mm -mm. You you think you think that the most toxic relationship that Aki can be in is with Himeno? What if he was in a relationship with something that's literally draining his life away? The most toxic of toxic relationships is him and the angel devil. And I'm here for it. <laughs> no! Damn it, no! Because it's so damn poetic. Like this this devil that doesn't care about humans and Aki that doesn't care about the devils. But they, I just, I just... Fujimoto, why are you doing this? Why do you make me ship them instantly? No. And yeah, and then the, it's like this spray of blood and everything around them in the background. It feels like parts of the Caribbean where Barbosa's marrying Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner. And she's just sitting there with all this blood spray. She's like, you got a handkerchief? And he's like, here you go. And it's like a handkerchief's like almost a, a chivalrous gesture from a man to a person that they like. And he just gives it to her. She's like, I'm impressed you came this close since I can shorten your life with a touch. And he's like, girl, I'm about to die. I don't care. And then he just says, as long as, it, he says, it's okay so long as material breaks the contract, contact, right? So as long as they don't touch each other, this could be, I, God. Now I'm just picturing like his last dying breath is that he makes a contract with her to like destroy everything and he like has to kiss her or something for it to work. The romantic in me is feeling like how messed up this could be. But I'm also kind of like, I want it. <laughs> just, I just. At this point, the sad thing is we know Aki's going to die. We know it's going to happen. And the future devil has said that his death is going to effing rule. So if him and the angel devil like go out in a blaze of glory together, I'm fine with this. Or if he goes out in a blaze of glory alongside of her. Sure. And she like just protects him with her big angel wing. And she goes, ow, ow. Like she's just not even, and he like socks him out. And he says, devil, take this one outside. And she's like, oh, he gave me an order. But I'll take that over fighting, I guess. Like, she's just, 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 she's not above, not above Aki giving her an order. He also called her a, a, a devil. I, I want to get to like, my brain is already swimming with the possibilities of these two. And I want him to be like, as he's dying, be like angel instead of danger, devil. I'm like, Fujimoto, why did you do this? Why did you do this? <laughs> All these theories. And so then we hear you two, but there's three of them there. He says, we'll let the fiends handle this. Let's find the samurai sword and the snake woman. And he's like, you know where to look? And he's like, no, we'll split up and search. He said you two, but there was three of them there. I'm assuming he said, I'm assuming, okay, I'm assuming he told Kobini and Denji to go and find the two of them and told Power maybe to stay behind with the fiends. Maybe that was it? Maybe? Because he said you too. So maybe he had Denji and Kobini come along and wanted Power to stick around and fight the devils because she's already a corpse, so it doesn't really matter. Of course they go to the fourth floor. Of course they do. Of course they do. But, oh my god. So, and then of course Aki... Find Sawatari, the luck of the draw, am I right? And he manages, like, the guys come out to attack him, and he manages to, like, knock the one guy out. Doesn't kill him, knocks him out, because he's not a devil, right? Aki has made a point. Aki has made a point in this that back there with the devil, when she told him to take the one guy outside, he didn't kill that man. He knocked out all the human people and was killing the devil. So again, consistent to Aki's character, right? And then the guys come out to attack with the guns from the gun devil, we presume. But they get, they all get, you know, basically they all die. Luckily, they don't die from being crushed into oblivion. They just die from like, you know, their brains probably imploding. And Aki's like, huh. Well, that's interesting. And then Makima just like walks out into the sunlight. Totally chill as a cucumber. Like just, hmm. Like I just, 
what a lovely day. What a lovely park. She didn't bring the bag of eyes with her, so she clearly did not intend to give the eyes back to the people that she took them from. If you'll notice, she doesn't have a bag of eyes on her at all. She left that stuff there. Oh my god. So yeah. And then we see the Aki going up into the corridor. And who should be there, but it's boss battle time with Sawatari. And she clearly has lured him there to try to pick them off one by one. I hate when she, like, sacrifices herself. She, like, sacrifices her nail. Ugh, it's gross. And he says to come along quietly, but she manages to summon the ghost devil. She said, swallow it up. Of course. Why would we be surprised? And I love the Aki's like, well, damn it. Now, her nose bleeds. So the question is, is Makima... So the question is, did, did Sawatari get influenced by Makima? Or... Is it because she overexerted her power to bring up the ghost devil and it caused her nose to bleed? We don't know that. Um, she doesn't instantly die, so... Interesting. And she asks the ghost to kill him, but he ends up fighting it. And I like that the future devil's like, well, you could peek a bit into the future, but you can't do anything more. And Mappa, of course, doing this amazing animation with the sword fighting and everything. At this point, it's like, okay, Mappa. <laughs> What can't you do at this point? And so then he has the ghost devil choking him. Which, that's so symbolic. So you have the ghost devil. The ghost devil choking him. Again, how many EDs have we had? How much imagery have we had of either Himeno with her hands around Aki's neck? Or the ghost devil or something? And now we're seeing the ghost devil do it. It was like all this big foreshadowing of what was going to happen. Like all of that. So, I don't think the ghost devil is going to kill Aki. I don't. I fully anticipate that either Aki is going to find a way to get past it or someone's going to help him. Something's going to happen. I don't think that this is the effing cool death that the future devil foresaw with Aki. I just don't think that it is, right? And maybe Aki's going to use that to his advantage, being like, this death is lame. I'm clearly not going to die this way. I, I would think that that's the case. I do feel like the ghost devil is a way for Aki to sever that past with him and O and to sever his guilt from himself and let that part of him go. I feel like that that's what this is representing. Again, Aki's like the protagonist of the series. He's the one having the guilt, the baggage, the retracing his steps to his past and the, and the issues that he's had in the past before with him and O. Like he's the one having all this stuff happen. Meanwhile, Denji's like, I'm just looking for sideburns, man. Or blade man, as uh, Alexander Q calls him. But yeah, so... So where does that leave us for the next episode? <laughs> for the season finale of this insanity? Um, well, so what we're left with in the midst of all this insanity is that Makima has asserted herself as the necessary evil, keeping the people safe. Kishibi does not really think that's true. Kishibi thinks that she has ulterior motives and she's just using this as a excuse he thinks there's more to it than that. Somehow he has some kind of jurisdiction over her that we don't know. I have no clue how. Um, we have the shark fiend and the violence fiend. They're there with power. Fiends all around. Um, the spider devil and the angel devil are there. Um, I love angel devil a lot. I'm shipping her with Aki already. Um, because they have this weird bond that could be a thing. Uh, dingy is Denji is still feeling like he would protect Kashibi no matter what. Um, I, But he wants to basically get close to the gun devil so he can get close to Makima. And then we have Sawatari and the blade devil that are just planning on wiping out. They want to wipe out the fourth division and then go back to, we assume, the gun devil. So I don't know. Next episode, if I'm making guesses on what's going to happen, I feel like Aki's going to get out. Aki's going to defeat the ghost devil somehow. Don't know how, but somehow Aki's going to defeat the ghost devil. And that's going to be like a conclusion to one of his arcs is him letting go of that part of him and moving on. I feel like that. I feel like he's going to let the part of him and O go with the gun, with the ghost devil and then move into angel devil phase, <laughs> right? We go from a ghost to an angel and they're both devils. So make that with what you will. Makima has established that she, you know what? It's funny. Makima may not be the big bad at the end of the day, but I feel like she's establishing herself as 
a hurdle that is going to come up at some point. We just don't know exactly when. Is Kashibi going to die in the next episode? I don't know. He might, but I don't know if he will or not. We haven't seen what he's been able to do. I I kind of don't want to think that he will, but with Fujimoto, you just don't know. I thought him and I was going to live way longer than she did, and she's gone. So I don't think Aki's going to die, just because I feel like we have more. He needs to connect more with Denji before he dies. I feel like that's going to be part of Denji having a, a, a check mark in the, the pyramid of needs, in the Maslow hierarchy of needs. I feel like he needs to develop a little bit more, a little bit more agency with, with Aki before he dies, right? And I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like at this point, Aki, Aki needs to get over Himeno and the Ghost Devil and where it's at right now in order to move into that next stage. So right now he's distanced himself from Dingy and Power, right? I don't know. And then as far as Sawatari, I think Sawatari's gonna die in the next episode, the, the blood dripping out of her nose seemed to hint enough for me. I do feel like maybe the Blade Devil's going to get away. But I don't know. He may die as well. I, there may be a whole bunch of deaths ne next episode. No clue. No clue. No clue. But, mm, I obviously don't want manga spoilers or spoilers for the next episode. But I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. I'm, I've got a lot to think about between now and next week and a lot of contemplating and rewatching of this episode I feel um before we dive into next week so but it'll be the season finale next week so <sighs> this is a great penultimate episode I was just had such a hype from it just such a hype and it was a lot of fun so what can we do right but um in any case I hope you all have a wonderful week please stay safe Take care. And yeah, I am going to be back next week with the season finale of Chainsaw Man. Bye.